Hello and welcome to day three of my New World No Cards build log. Yesterday I increased my rank by one. As you can see, uh, if you paid attention to yesterday's episode, I was only a commoner of the second grade. Today I'm a Thane of the third grade, so I increased by one rank. As you can tell, in contrast to the first day, ranks are coming much more slowly now and will continue to do so um, into the future. Now, uh, let's jump in and see what research I completed on day three. I mentioned yesterday that I was going to max out stone quarrying and forestry, and I proceeded to do just that, putting three points in forestry to finish it off at level eight, and two points in stone quarry, which is now also maxed out at level eight. Down below, in weapon making, I put an, adi an additional point into bow production and will continue to do so when I have points to spare. However, I began focusing on military due to the fact that my peacetime is continually running down and I want to make sure I have a little bit of defense against potential attackers. You know, something to dissuade them from attacking in the first place. So, I completed... So I completed three points of research into fortification. It is now at level four. This unlocks the lookout tower, which is the smallest stone tower. I'll get to the castle in a minute because I started building my castle. In on uh, day four, I plan on continuing some research <clears throat> along these lines and unlocking the archer, as you can see. So then I can start recruiting archers and building up a small defense army. I didn't do anything in farming. Like I said yesterday, if you paid attention, not if you paid attention, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll have noticed that I do not plan on putting any additional research into any of these farming technologies until I have a decent defense set up. Education, mostly unchanged, except I upgraded an entire level and unlocked level 7 of arts, which I proceeded to research along with level two of literature, which unlocked the jester's court. So let's go to the village and see what new buildings are placed. Now, not a lot is happening here. Build times are rather long, and as you can see, even though I unlocked the jester's court yesterday, it is still building today. I added an additional brewery because I added a hovel. Well, I added a hovel. Let's not put the cart before the horse, shall we? I added in ho a hovel, and I needed more ale production, so I then proceeded to place a brewery. Now, if you look at I'm, my popularity and everything, I am feeding my peasants times four ale rations. I am making 4,631 ale a day, and my peasants are only drinking 3,648 a day, so I have some extra to sell. In the food department, it is pretty much the same old story. I haven't had to build any additional apple farms since day one because my production is just so crazy and I sell the excess. So I'm still making 57,000 apples a day and my peasants are only eating 46,000. As my village grows, I will have to place a few more apple farms, but for the in the next couple of days, I doubt that that will be relevant. As far as gold goes, well, I'm bribing my peasants just as much as I can. It is now costing me 1,140 gold a day, and I'm getting 45 popularity from that. Once I have my Jester's Court complete, I'll get an additional 5 popularity. Unfortunately, I couldn't move it any closer to the keep, but really the... The Passive Honor bonus is more important than one additional popularity. Because if you have one additional, uh, is it called an honor bonus? Uh, it's an honor multiplier. There we go. It says right there. If you have an extra honor multiplier, that will yield more honor per day than having an extra popularity point. So it's worth having these flower beds closer to the keep right now. Like I said, there is a premium token that you can get from a quest later on. And hopefully I'll have more buildings or more honor structures built by that time and then I'll move the flower beds out further because there will be more important honor buildings to place in their stead. 
Finally, the weather is very nice. Sunny skies giving me a total of 12 popularity, which is only offset by wolf lairs in the parish, which hopefully will be removed relatively quickly. This all adds up to a cumulative total of 8,250 honor per day. This is passive honor. No cards, it's just from what I sh from what I detailed previous in here. So yeah, 125 positive popularity right now, and it is due to go in. It's due to be 130 once the jester's court is completed. So I went off on a bit of a tangent there regarding popularity, but there really weren't that many other buildings that I completed. Namely, there are two stone quarries here. So now I have what 11. Yes, 11, and that is, that those are all the buildings that I had time to build, time and resources to build yesterday. However, I did get a good start on the castle. Since I researched the small lookout towers, I placed a few of them around my keep. <coughs> As you can see, the castle is still building, but it should be done by the time my peace time runs out, and hopefully I'll have some archers and stuff to put on there. I'll also need to build some barracks, so... That's, it's all a work in progress right now, but isn't the whole game. The whole game is sort of a work in progress, if you look at it that way. Regarding quests, I only was able to complete an, an additional two, namely Scouts 3 and Living Off the Land 1. Now, both of those are opportunistic. If you don't have the resources around you to complete them, you're not going to be able to complete them. So please don't uh, set your standards by what I did. Now, I, I haven't covered this before, but I have made a significant amount of gold by free-to-play player standards. If you see here, my current stockbroker progress is 12,939 gold. And I spent most of that gold on research points. As you can see here, my current or the next research point will cost me almost 2,000 gold. So if you have gold on hand, you should invest it in research points. I like to keep at least a thousand in the coffers in case something comes up because that's how much I'm going to need to run the village with max bribes for a day, roughly. Now the price in the parish has been crashing ever since I started selling apples to it. <clears throat> it appears we only have one other player actively selling to it, so most of it was crashed by me. Oops, if we... Okay, that's that's not going to work. I'm going to have to select my village and just, just do what I want you to do. Do it. Okay. Currently, the price <clears throat> the price is at 113 gold for an app per unit of apples. Ale is doing slightly better at 148 gold, so I'm going to sell some of my excess ale right now and make a, a bit more of gold. Nothing much else has really happened except for, oh, um, I ended up in a house, yes. Now this unfortunately was due to the fact that the player who got me into the house knew me from another, another world. I didn't actively solicit this invite, I just woke up um, yesterday morning and found an invite in my box from this player who apparently knew me from World 5. That said, it really should you shouldn't have a problem getting into a house. Take a look at this guy down here. Unless this is somebody who also knew somebody, good old nepotism like me, <clears throat> this village isn't all that advanced. It is a small village but he has a parish and he's now in a house. So my, my village is larger. I mean, if you look at it relatively, it is sort of middle of the road. There are villages that started at the same time as me that are quite a bit smaller. And then there are the ones that played some cards and are larger. And then of course there are the ones that played lots of cards and they already have three villages. But by free to play standards, this is a pretty decent village size for day three. And I am com I'm content with it. So, that's in closing, I think going forward, I plan on continuing some military research to get the basic defense up, get some archers up, and then I hope to focus more again on the economy. But this will be after my weapon production is increased as well. 
You could consider weapon production economy. What I meant by economy was food economy. With with my, all my research put into wood and stone production, that should be less of an issue, and I may actually have to start investing in bigger stockpiles to hold the extra wood. As you can see right now, there is a significant disparity between wood and stone production, but unfortunately I can't move the stockpile anymore to counter that due to the lack of a premium token. Building pikemen will require some iron, so I'm going to have to go into that branch of the research tree, which is why I'm saving it until after I have my defenses up and running, let's say. So most likely no one will attack me because I'm in this house, but if you weren't in a house, getting those defenses up would be more important. Now remember, as a final concluding word, this is a new world. The tactics I use in this world are meant to be applied to other new worlds. Worlds are, have already been developed and stuff, you can follow an alternate route and be successful. This is a route designed for new worlds that aren't developed yet. And I just wanted to make that paramount. So thank you for listening and I hope you stay tuned for tomorrow's log. Until that time, farewell. Stronghold Kingdoms. The battle has just begun.